Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Refunct for the Nintendo Switch. And to be honest, Refunct is one of those games that was designed for a specific purpose and a specific audience and surprisingly its eShop description is one of the most accurate I think I've ever seen. It is a short, simple, first-person platformer that doesn't really try to do anything else, and in all honesty, it really does have a pretty amazing charm, even considering how short it is. You start off the game with no tutorial, no instructions, and no hand-holding, and really even no idea exactly what you're supposed to do. But just exploring your own controller, you realize you can move your character, move the camera, and jump, and really, that's about all you need besides crouching. As you move your character, you realize that the barren wasteland under your feet seems to spring to life as you touch each panel. And given that there are these red laser beams shooting up to the sky, you would assume that that might be an objective. And as soon as you do reach one of those pillars of light, you step on a button that immediately raises another land mass immediately adjacent to your position. And it's at this point that you start to discover maybe what you're supposed to do. Each newly raised landmass will have a new light beacon with a new button to press and more platforms to try and allow you a way to solve a puzzle to get up to press that button. But the further you make it into the game, the more complicated or maybe just the more skill-based the puzzles will be. Some might consist of making your way up a semi-platforming style staircase while others might have you vaulting across chasms, and still others may have you exploring the length and breadth of the actual jump mechanic with wall grabs and wall kicks that may become necessary to make your way to that next light beacon. Additionally, you may see little red and black glowing cubes sitting atop of high perches, and again with no explanation or tutorial, you're not really sure if you should be collecting them or not, but I think most gamers are just going to try anyway. And if you are going for a 100% completion of the game, that is something that you'll probably have to do. Otherwise, while pressing the buttons immediately beneath the light beacons is the way to ultimately finish the game, changing every single barren tile to a lively grass-colored tile as well as collecting all of those glowing cubes is the only way to 100% the game. But while establishing your own learning curve and figuring out your own platforming prowess to navigate your way to each light pillar to press each button might add a little bit of length to the game, even playing at an incredibly casual pace, you can definitely beat the game within the 20-30 to 30 minute margin. But as the game stated in its description, it is a simple, short, first-person puzzle platformer. And in that sense, though certain players might find themselves a little dissatisfied with the objectively short length of the game, you can't really feel as though you've been misled. One thing that does bear a remark, though, is the game's environment and its soundtrack. The game's soundtrack is very ambient and nice and soothing, and the game's environment is actually incredibly well done and there are no load times to be found. The entire day and night cycle can transition in about 20 minutes, allowing shadows and clouds to pass over and about the environment, creating entirely new hues and making even this incredibly short experience feel very immersive. Additionally, though the entire puzzle is surrounded by seemingly endless ocean, there's no penalty for falling in the water, and for certain puzzles to make it to the buttons, navigating your way through the water will actually be necessary. And again, that fact as well is just another one that adds to the satisfaction of player exploration. But while this game is, and I do feel like I need to accentuate this point incredibly short, there is some odd satisfaction in the gameplay itself. The controls of the game are actually incredibly tight, the platforming is forgiving, and the ambient environment is just really calm and relaxing. And despite it being objectively one of the simplest platforming games I've ever played, I felt an immediate urge to go back and play it two or three more times, and even without an online leaderboard, challenge myself to get a better time each playthrough. That being said though, I do feel like if Defunct included an online leaderboard system, it would increase the replayability of the game by a huge factor. But then again, online competition seems like it would be in direct contrast to what the developer was hoping for the game to be, which is a relaxing first-person platformer. But since this is actually an incredibly simple and incredibly short indie game, that is about all there is to say about it. So if you are a fan of casual games, or relaxing puzzlers, or just games that are more devoted to the ambiance and experience of the player, Refunct might actually be one that you'd enjoy. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Refunct on the Nintendo Switch, so if you enjoyed the review or found it helpful, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. As you can see, there are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be some new game to discover right here. 
But since I can only cover a few games a week, if you want to see what I'm up to, what I'm gaming on next, or if you just want to get involved in the channel, you can click any of the buttons in the lower right hand corner of our channel's banner for Twitter, Instagram, you can talk to me on Discord, or you can help me build this channel and create these reviews by becoming a Patreon supporter. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching. Bye.